Today's topic is exciting. And uh, just like for you, it's new to me as well. So don't expect me to know everything because it's very, very new. Let's begin. If you know, Looker Studio Masterclass is about everything about Looker Studio, right? We talk about different categories of concept from planning your dashboard, from connecting to your data that is sitting somewhere else, transforming the data, bringing it into the shape that is ready for visualization, visualizing your data, the topic of today's lesson, interacting with your graphics, with your charts, with your dashboard, sharing your dashboard and you're managing its security and managing your dashboards and data sources, the assets that you've got in your Looker Studio account. And finally, sometimes we talk about BigQuery, okay? Today is about visualization and it's about query result variables. It's a new feature release and we're going to have an overview, a very in-depth overview, as much as I could learn about it since it was released. Okay, so today's agenda. We're going to learn what query result variables are and why I'm so excited about them. The name is not exciting at all. It sounds like something boring, to be honest, but it's really exciting. How to define them, how to use them, where to use them, how to manage them, how to remove them, how to duplicate them, etc. We'll see it all. Examples of variables, chips, query result variables, text chips in action. Okay, so we see a lot of examples. And tips on interactivity, performance of your report, right? How does it affect your performance? How does it affect your cost, maybe, or some other limitations and coders? And we'll go through some use cases and not use cases, limitations, what we cannot do with core result variables right now, but hopefully in the future, okay? So let's move on to Looker Studio query result variables. Let's begin. These are the topics that we're going to go through. I expect it to take around 30, 35 minutes to go through all of these. I'm assuming that you know Looker Studio and everything else around the topics that we're talking about. So for example, if I talk about data blending, I assume that you know what it is. If you don't know what it is, you can go to the fast forward section, you can search the community and you can find what it is, okay? In this lesson, we are focusing on query result variables and at the end, we'll have Q&A as well, okay? So let's see what they are. They allow us to insert dynamic values into text components. So, you know, we could write a title in Looker Studio. Now, that title can have dynamic bits and pieces. We can grab a portion of our data, a data source, a value that we have, a dimension that we have, a name that we have, a city, a country, a channel, a source, something from the data and paste it right within the title. We couldn't do it before. If we wanted to show the value of a dimension, we needed a dimension a scorecard. Most recently, previously, we needed to create a table with just one row. And if you wanted to show the value of a metric, we needed a scorecard. And if you wanted to show the value of a metric within text like this, we had to write the text, create some spaces in the middle, and paste one scorecard in the middle. So we had to work around it. But now it is coming directly, for example, here from GA4, this value is coming within this text box, okay? So this is one example. Another example is multiple dynamic values in a single text box. So when we are writing something, when we are creating a title, we are not limited to just adding one dynamic value within the text. We can go crazy. We can have, we've had this much revenue of which this percentage was made from this category. And we can insert little bits of pieces by querying the data, by defining where in that data set that value resides, okay, where we can find it, Looker Studio needs to know where to find it and then place it directly here. It can be from Google Analytics 4, as you can see, it can be from something else. It can be from a spreadsheet, from a Google Sheet. And this Google Sheet seems to have some information of the students of Looker Studio Masterclass. This is real. I actually create this sheet. I have some automations. It is tracking your progress within the course, within Looker Studio Master, I know how many people completed how many lessons, how many people have completed how many quizzes. And I have this report, not so beautiful, to be honest, but I have another version of this report that I look at daily. How many people have watched how many lessons, how many quizzes, etc. But this is nice. I might actually upgrade my own report to become more like this. So I hope you're excited. I hope 
that you are wondering, okay, this is good. This looks very good. How do I do that? Let's do it. But before, because we always go through everything a fundamental way, I wanted to stress that every chart in Lucre Studio is a table. Why is it important? We'll get to that. If you've been part of Lucre Studio Masterclass in lesson four, You've seen this concept. Every chart at its core is powered by a table, right? A school chart is a table. It's a table that doesn't have any breakdown dimension. The value of a metric is completely aggregated. And that value comes here. The title is at the top. So it can be looked at as a table. It can be a table. A table is powering this scorecard. We can think of it like that. Thinking of every chart as a table will help us diagnose, understand the chart, plan the charts accordingly much, much easier. A bar chart is also a table. We have people and the revenue that they've made. They are, these are salespeople. This is their revenue. This could be students. This could be their scores or the number of lessons they passed or their score on a quiz or the HR, etc. Okay. Now, even this can be a table. To create this, we need a table. Okay. To create a time series, we need a table. We need the values of each date, the value of revenue for each date. And then Lucre Studio can magically read this table and put this in order and put this dots on the chart and just connect them to each other, create that launch chart. Okay. So every time series is a table, but is every variable a table too? It's just a value. We put it in a text. Now, I wanted you to remember this because every variable is not necessarily a table, but it starts with the table. Every query result variable is a cell of a table. Okay. It's a cell of a table. So how do we tell Looker Studio before even seeing how it's done? How can Looker Studio understand what to put in the in that title that we want? It's a cell of a table. So if we can construct the table with a query, query, look at the result, result, and define which cell do we want to pick it from we'll have our query result variable. Boring name, very accurate. And now I guess you make sense. Why is it called query result value? So let's take a look at this one. Is this cell actually a table? Let me bring it back. Yeah, it's a table. It's a table without a dimension. And is this cell the first row and the first column of this table, which Looker Studio is querying from the data source GA4 and putting it, this table, one and one, in exactly within the text. How about these two? 36% was made from apparel. So this is like percentage of total. And this is the name of the category with that percentage of total. Okay. So if you want to look at it as a table, we can see the table. It's also a table. Item category, the revenue from that item category, and how much that revenue was of the total revenue that we made. Okay. So apparel, was 36%. So we told Looker Studio, go create this table, query this data, look at the result and create two variables. The first one is the value of row one and the column of item category. And the second one is the value of row one and the column of item revenue. Okay. So now that we know what these are, how is it a cell of a table? 